It came out so freaking cool. I'm just, I can't believe it. My favorite's still the Crocs. Mine the too. Crocs are my favorite. They are the coolest, those little guys. Well, hello, I just finished this mural, three weeks mural, and today I'm gonna show you how I painted it. It's in a staircase, so it's quite a narrow space. Show you how to paint the staircase mural in this video. This is one of those projects that I knew from the start that it would be a new and learning experience, mainly because of the tight and uneven painting space. Although my entire house is covered in murals, as you may or may not know, I do have a wall and a ceiling that are still white, the wall above the stairway. It's just difficult to reach and I never bother to insist on painting it. We do have a dragon tapestry over that wall, so we still didn't break the no surface left undecorated rule. So I knew from the start that I would need some special equipment to get access to the uneven surface that is the stairwell. There are several options to consider in this situation. You could do with just a ladder leveler like the extend the leg, pivot or a ladder extender like this. But since I didn't have a regular telescoping or extension ladder, I would have had to buy a ladder too, so I decided to invest in an adjustable multi-purpose A-frame ladder. Specifically the 18 foot reach MPXA aluminum multi-position ladder with 300 pounds load capacity from Gorilla Ladders. It seemed like the safest way to go and it's good value for the money. I do expect to get a really good use from this. Besides, it wasn't that much more expensive than one ladder extender. Besides, it has oversized buttons for added stability and ease of use. You had me at oversized buttons. It was actually surprisingly heavier than I thought it would be, considering that it is made of aluminum, but it does feel hefty and strong. And it is a pretty big ladder once you unfold it completely. My impressions on this ladder are thusly. It was easy and safe to use, albeit a tad heavy, my muscles don't mind. And the latches are quite loud, so you wouldn't want to use it while you have a three-year-old sleeping in the house while you're using it. What I wish I would have done for this project is actually brought a platform, so I didn't have to move the ladder so often. Oh well next time. This was a big project and I estimated it to take 10 to 15 days. It happens every time that I visit a mural for the first time. I always, well, generally, underestimate the size even if I measure the wall and time it will take me. It took me a few days to gather reference photos, plan the composition, make some preliminary sketches so that I can show my client what to expect and also get approval before I begin the actual painting on the wall. Also, preliminary sketching is a super important part of the mural process, essential in making sure that the mural flows easily, there is no confusion or wasted time on decision making on site. It's like practicing painting the mural remotely. Of course, this is not to say that you're bound to your sketch. I do improvise, take things out and add other elements, so it's good to be flexible during many parts of the job. Initially, I was planning to minimize the ladder movements up and down the stairs and work wall by wall. Finish wall one, then start on wall two and ceiling, then move upstairs to the other three walls. But then I was worried that I might lose consistency of colors and textures by starting over again. So I decided to work the whole space at once. So I painted the whole background first, and then I worked on the mid ground, all those darker green distant trees, vines, flowers and plants and I left the foreground elements unpainted to save on time and supplies and also to make the design easier to remember. In the early days I would paint the whole wall with the background colors first and then add the mid-ground and foreground ele elements on top. That was a waste of time and paint, but you learn as you age you hope. Working in only shades and hues of green for the first two weeks and I was getting really excited to start putting in some color. This time I'm also trying new paints, the golden mural paintworks that are actually only new to me. Apparently they've been around for over a year. I was very surprised and happy to discover that they're not that much more expensive than the chroma mural paints that I've been using for a couple of years. And when you consider the house paint prices, I think you're still getting a good value for the money. 
Now, some pigments are more expensive than others, like the moss yellow is twice the price of the other blue and the earthly pigments, and the sap green and dioxys in purple were slightly more expensive too, probably because those pigments are more expensive. I got the white and black in a gallon size and the price was relatively similar to those of good quality house paints. I used the golden paints in conjunction with the chroma mural paints that I had left. And here's another great tip before you go on site to paint a mural. If you have large areas of more complex colors than you have straight out of your tubes, mix your paint at home. I generally save my Chinese food containers on the rare occasions that we get Chinese Chinese food or other random yogurt or, or containers with a lid. They're convenient to make secondary tertiary colors and they make for a pretty good palette too. Here's my process of getting my supplies together before the big first day. Getting all the paints together, paint brushes, all shapes and sizes, some paint trays and rollers, extra paint containers and rags. I also got some roller extenders so I can reach high surfaces easier. All paints and some other stuff go in my heavy-duty wood carrier that is great for carrying heavy loads. You'll also need some painter's tape or masking tape to protect edges. Rags and paper towels... But wait, there's more! I have learned to wear gloves when painting murals because honestly it's a messy job and it takes a toll on your hands. It's impossible to get all that paint out from under your nails and some of those pigments may be toxic when absorbed into the skin. I like these black nitrile tattoo gloves, the extra small fit like a, well, like a glove. And though they might be thinner than heavy duty gloves, I can barely feel them on. The hallmark of a good glove. Tarps are essential for covering the floor or the surface under and around you when you're painting. I have several tarps that I use, then chalk for sketching the design on the wall, plastic sheets, a two-foot step ladder for a small boost, and sometimes a straight edge like this comes in handy, especially for doing a grid or straight lines, but alas, not this time. I also use some of this paint additive called Floatrol. It extends drying time. If you paint with acrylics, you know how frustrating it can be when paint dries before you get the chance to blend. Well, this is very helpful with that. I just add a little bit to the paints when I put them on my palette. I wouldn't add more than 10% of paint to Floatrol ratio, it would get too diluted. And of course, the ladder that doesn't even fit in the picture. <laughs> and that's all you need for painting a mural. No, you forgot the most important thing! A water bucket. You need a water bucket for your water and keeping your brushes wet. Never let your brushes get dry. They'll die. Another really useful thing to keep in mind when you have a large project is entertainment of some kind. Having some music or an audiobook is indispensable to my painting routine. It's not that I don't like to be left alone with my thoughts and wallow in the transience of my own life and my loved ones, or the fact that I never have or make the time to actually sit down to read a physical book but I really do enjoy listening to audiobooks. The narrator's voices, the vivid descriptions, adjectives, and so many characters and insights into the human psyche and personality. Though I'm not big into scary movies anymore, I like listening to scary books, apparently. I don't know if you're familiar with Jason Pargin's, aka David Wong's series of books centered around his characters John and Dave, namely John dies at the end, this book is full of spiders and what the hell did I just read, so I'll tell you. These three books are genre-bending, humorous accounts of two college dropouts inadvertently charged with saving their small town and the world from hosts of supernatural and paranormal invasions. David Wong, Jason Pargin, has updated the Lovecraft tradition and infused it with humor that, rather than lessening the horror, increases it dramatically. They are horror, so if you don't like detailed accounts of horrific things happening to humans, maybe they aren't for you. But you may be surprised and learn something about yourself. They also made a movie after John dies at the end. I highly 
highly recommend watching that first to get an idea of the style. It's a one and a half hour investment versus a 10 hour investment. I doubt you'll think it was a waste of time though. Definitely not your regular Marvel or Disney flick. And I am feverishly awaiting his fourth book in his series. If this book exists, you're in the wrong universe. It's coming out in the fall, which is only like a couple months away. As I said, I spent 15 days painting this 300 square foot mural. So roughly 80, 85 hours. I had plenty of time to listen to two other of Jason Pargin's books. Re-listen to Futuristic Violence and Fancy Suits. And for the first time, Zoe punches the future in the dick, uh, which are all centered around this uh, female character named Zoe. I might have to re-listen to the latter to fully appreciate it. <laughs> By the way, I have more detailed videos of this mural that I shot in vertical format. You can find those in my shorts playlist if you're interested. After I was done painting the flowers and the mushrooms and the animals and really everything, I sealed the walls with a dead flat varnish from Modern Masters for protection from those little fingerprints that are going to adore this mural for a few years to come. I applied it with a brush, but you could also use a roller. I was a bit afraid that the roller would leave bubbles and too much texture. As you see, it goes on a bit milky, but you just spread it and make sure not to overbrush as this can add milkiness to the surface. Just lay it down evenly and move on. I decided for a matte finish as the gloss is not only difficult to photograph but also I think it takes away from the mural with all those pesky reflections. If you're interested what I do with all of my supplies at the end of the day, I just gather everything in really neat bags and I put them away. Generally, I ask the client if they have a little corner that I could put them away safely until the next day when I'm going to work. And they usually are okay with it. And there you have it. I hope that you have enjoyed this video, the explanations, tips and the results. And press that like button. And if you have additional questions, you can leave me a comment down below. And also, if you want to see more mural and acrylic painting videos and other art stuff, subscribe to the channel and click that bell to get notified when I post another video. Otherwise, what's the point? Until next time, my friend, keep creating and trust the flow. And remember, talking nonsense is the sole privilege mankind possesses over the other organisms. It's by talking nonsense that one gets to the truth. I talk nonsense, therefore I'm human. Drown me up the coast, boy, wanna hear the ocean roar, crash over me, then ride it home, dance it up in moonlight, hold me tight and don't let go, watch over me, we are, we are all stardust, 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 left behind, left to Another, another, another Face the sun, fear no one Cause we are all one We are all, we are all one We are all